So, <laughs> I bought an Xbox Series X so that you don't have to. Or maybe you actually have to. In this video, I'm going to tell you all the pros and cons of choosing an Xbox Series X. I'm also gonna go over the actual hardware, the controller, the games, just about everything that is my experience so far with the Xbox Series X. So I hope you will enjoy this video and maybe even find it useful. So the console war, it is a constant thing going on. But for me, I have never really looked at this as a war, as I happen to like video games in general. I like all three major companies and I enjoy gaming and that is not based on whichever system or brand or whatever. I like video games, the actual games. But I have to admit, I am very late to the Xbox party because I grew up with Nintendo and then I converted myself a bit over to PlayStation. But now it was just the correct time to delve a bunch into Xbox. Last year I bought an Xbox One X, that was my first Xbox, made a video on that. And it has been a solid system. And I play a lot of PlayStation and I play a lot of Nintendo Switch. But that being said, some brands and systems has proven to provide a better user experience. It could be that I like the controller more on one side, some of the exclusive games on another side, or just that I enjoy the menus or interface within one system more than the other. But like, I have never truly been an Xboxer until now. I bought my first physical Xbox games. They're totally standing out against all the blue and red games. I like how the three brands are color coded with red, blue and green. It would have been confusing if they had the same color, some of them. But basically, what on earth made me choose an Xbox instead of a PlayStation? Maybe you know the answer to that. A lot of us are in the same boat, so to speak. Um, that is, the PlayStation 5 is just not available. It is impossible to get a hold of a PlayStation 5 here in Norway. I mean, I have been in contact with one scalper in my town. We actually have a scalper in this small city of Northern Norway who bought up PlayStation 5s and then are reselling them for just ridiculous. I would never pay that price. So basically availability, uh, impossible to get a hold of one online or in any store or anywhere, except for the, scal the one scalper we have in our town. Uh, <laughs> but it so happens that we do have access to Xbox Series X and I just wanted for a long time now, actually, these consoles are not new. The PlayStation 5 is not new. This is not new. They came out like November 2020 and I just wanted to experience a new console and the new features, ray tracing, like all this stuff that I don't know. I just know for a fact that a lot of people are saying that the games are visually better and you can really tell that's what people are saying. So of course I am curious about the new generation of consoles. So that is why I made my decision to get an Xbox Series X until I can get a PlayStation 5, which is probably next year sometime, according to my local electronic store guy in my city anyway, sometime next year, 2022. Lord. Okay, so let's go over the pros of the Xbox Series X. Some of the coolest features, in my opinion, are number one, practically no load times. I have never been more satisfied and they are almost instant. I went back to my PlayStation 4 the other day and I could already feel that I had gotten spoiled with short slash no load times. What? Another feature that I find myself enjoying a bit too much is the quick resume feature. I mean, I can have several games open at the same time and then jump freely between them. They're all open and in a matter of a few seconds, actually a few seconds, I can jump from one game to another. This is a game jumper's paradise and I'm a game jumper jump from one game to another because sometimes in some evenings I just don't know what I'm in the mood for uh, when it comes to playing a game. I just know that I want to relax and play a game but I don't necessarily know what I'm in the mood for. So I jump between like a first person shooter or just uh, a platformer of some sorts or just a simulation game or a big RPG. I don't know. You know sometimes I don't know. So game jumping with quick resume. <laughs> Guys, that is such a lovely feature and I didn't know that I needed this feature this much. Quick resume everyone. PlayStation 5 also has something like this. 
Katrine Bata said. It's just incredibly convenient. Thirdly, the feature that I praise Xbox Series X a lot for is that it has full support for all backwards compatibility. You can pop in any Xbox game from any previous system into this uh, controller. So with this is a good uh, controller. And we're talking like all the way back to the first Xbox. You can pop any disc that says Xbox into this and it will work. Full backwards compatibility. We need the Dutch, and I think that is the future. I think that is what we need to have in all consoles going forward uh, to preserve older games. A lot of games are just not ported, never got a remake. How do we play older games? Backwards compatibility. It just shows respect in a, in a way to previous games on previous systems. I love it. One of the biggest pros of Xbox is the Game Pass. Everyone is saying that and I'm saying it too. Which means Netflix with games. How much is it? 10, 15 dollars a month. Sort of like Netflix e price. And you get access to over 100 games. Which you can download to your system and play. And you won't lose the save files or whatever if you cancel your subscription. However, the subscription is it's making you play the game. You have sort of uh, rented a license to play the game, but you don't own the game. Mm. But, oh my god, how many games are you gonna know for sure that you like? Because you have tried it for uh, free through this feature before making a decision to actually buy a game. So that can actually save you a few. <laughs> because we have all bought games that we ended up not liking. Like Anthem, Monster in the World. Yeah. Oh, another pro. The controller, I love it. It's so ergonomically correct. Xbox has always been really good with controllers. And it's just such a good grip, good for my hands. I'm very happy with the controller. It feels very smooth and good. Okay, so we have gotten to the cons of the system, the bad things with the system. I want to say, first of all, the naming scheme of the entire Xbox franchise by Microsoft is terrible, like actual horrendous. The first Xbox was called Xbox, already kind of a mouthful. And then they decided to release Xbox 360. Later, they decided to release Xbox One. And some of the improved versions of One was Xbox One S and Xbox One X. I've gotten it correct so far. And then, to make matters worse, they released the Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X. And if you want to talk about the first Xbox, I sometimes refer to it as Xbox One, as in it wasn't the first one, but that is actually the third one. And it just uh, doesn't make sense. And I am sure a lot of like casual consumers, like the, the typical parent or the casual gamer or the person that just hasn't read the entire Wikipedia site about the naming schemes, uh, they will find it really confusing. So it's actually, in my opinion, not a very smart marketing tactic to name all of these systems so similar, really. So similar to one another. Which kind of reminds me of the Wii naming scheme, which was also terrible because parents didn't know what the Wii U had that the Wii didn't have. Was it just an expansion to the Wii? It was actually a new system. It was just bad naming. And I just feel that the naming is not the best. And some of the other cons with the Xbox in general, I feel like, is that it doesn't really have a big of a JRPG library of games to it. And by that I mean the games that I, you know, the niche games that I like. Anime style JRPGs, the Atelier series, I mean they, they have some Tales games. But I feel like it stops at that. 
So in this way, I feel like PlayStation is far superior if you want to delve into a lot of JRPG games. Niche JRPG games, anime style RPG games, they are almost, in my opinion and in my experience, almost non-existent on the Xbox or I mean in the Xbox universe. And just from browsing the Xbox store and the Game Pass list, it looks to me that the game library is very dominated by first-person shooters, third-person shooters, and or a bunch of racing games. So the library is very dominated with shooters and racing games. It's my first impression and it is just my impression. Well, already you can see the three games that I picked up for this system. They're all shooters, but then again I like to shoot things, so don't get me wrong. It's just that the diversity isn't there. I'm very happy with shooters on this. So it's actually a really nice console if that is one of your favorite genres. I'm just warning you that if you were looking for a lot of JRPGs to play, this is not the console to uh, look around at in for that. Okay, hardware. As Isha man so well put it, <laughs> As Ishaman so well put it, he's. I can't see how them yeah. <clears throat> he said that consoles are almost no longer just consoles. They're almost small computers by now because they are super powerful. And that was basically when I said, why do they have to be so big? And then Ishaman was like, do you have any idea how powerful these consoles are? They need all the cooling. And I was like, does it really have to be that big? Not even to mention the PlayStation 5, which is horrendously big. I can't stand it. I hate the look of the PlayStation 5. While this one I can barely stand, but it's still just a super heavy, big towering tower of sorts. How am I gonna fit to these consolers? <laughs> More old consoler? Con console. Okay. Console. I mean, how am I gonna fit these consoles under my TV? I can't. So I have decided that I had to put this as a towering tower next to my uh, TV, under my TV. They just don't fit. <laughs> oh, that is good. I have settled with the size, so to speak. And like I touched in on briefly, uh, the controller is good, solid, heavy, uh, just about the correct weight. So the overall experience I enjoy. But I have a feeling that if I don't use it for a while, there's gonna be a lot of dust in here. But you can also put it sideways, which I also did like this. Boom! Sideways console. Sideways gaming. It's such a satisfying button. <clears throat> so I guess uh, this brings us to games. I've so far bought three physical games for my Serious X, as I call it. And I've also grabbed like, I don't know, five, six games off the digital store. All games that were on sale. I bought Doom Eternal because I still haven't gotten around to play this. And I am an old Doom fan. The first Doom game for the PC was one of my first games that I ever played in my life. And I really enjoyed the first um, Doom in the new series, Doom 2016. Uh, so Doom Eternal, uh, I played it a tiny bit and it looks super crisp, super good. Runs really smooth, it's incredible. So it's looking really good so far. It is the newest entry to the Doom series. It is basically a first person shooter that is very fast paced and brutal, where you kill demons like all day, every day, in complete chaos. Some other game that I picked up was Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2. That is a mouthful, that is a long title. But I have never played any of the uh, Sniper series. I played Sniper Elite, but that is an entirely different series. But uh, I enjoy sniping things, and uh, that is always my choice of playing if that choice is provided to me. Sniping from a distance. That is incredibly satisfying. But I haven't played this game yet. And the reason for me not having played that yet is because of this game, which has taken over my life the past week. It is my most played game by far on this new system. Outriders. It is actually a uh, somewhat new game, somewhat new game. It has been out for a few months. Made by People Can Fly. It's published by Square Enix. It is a looter shooter that can sometimes be pretty much compared to the Destiny series, where you can play alone, sure, but you can also play together with friends co-op. 
it doesn't have to be your friends, it can be randoms from my Discord channel. But the thing is that this even has crossplay support. Crossplay. I can play together with uh, anyone on any system, whether they be on PC, PS4, or Xbox. We need crossplay in our lives. And I hope that becomes something that is always implemented in future games. Also, cross save. So convenient. I opened cross save in Destiny 2 that I played on PlayStation 4, and I have now everything that I did on PlayStation 4 in Destiny 2 over on this. Because of cross save, such a simple thing, but we needed it, and I didn't know how much I needed cross save or even cross play. It is simply the future. And I am having a blast in Outriders. I think it is a very satisfying first person shooter and the lore and the story actually has me hooked and intrigued. I read everything within the lore. It is about the human race leaving Earth to start colonizing on a different planet because they crashed and burned Earth as we do. And they spent 80 years in cryosleep traveling through the universe to reach this new planet called Enoch, which they are supposed to colonize again and make it the new Earth. But this planet has a lot of anomaly storms, and when that storm touches a human being, it can either kill the human or alterate them a lot so that they get a lot of magical powers all of a sudden. And that is what happened to you, the Outrider that you are playing. With several different classes to choose from, it's just such a fun and fast game. So far, I'm addicted, and I like it, and I love it, sort of, and I can recommend Outriders. It is on Game Pass if you want to try it for free, without the commitment. But I really like the cover, I just had to have the cover. So my digital games, so they include, so far, Assassin's Creed Origins, because I am playing Origins again. I also have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I have rebought Dragon's Dogma, which I actually have reviewed on my channel, but it was on sale, so I rebought it. And I have Recore, and I have Shining Resonance Refrain, uh, also a game that I reviewed on my channel, and I already own it uh, on my Switch. I mean, all of these games I have previously played or already own on some other system. Uh, guilty of rebuying games that I already have. But they were all on sale, so it was fine. And I also bought uh, Division 2. I have no experience with uh, Tom Clancy's Division anything, nothing. But I was recommended it because I, I like looter shooters and Division 2 is apparently also one. Okay guys, so, so that was all for the Xbox Series X first impression video. Also some pros and cons. My personal first impressions with the entire experience with the console and what I have been playing on it and all of that. I hope you found this video to be somewhat useful and I totally get it if you're not going to get an Xbox. In a way it has been incredible that you even watched all this way if you already knew going into this video I mean that you are not going to pick this up. But I guess I served my purpose and I bought an Xbox Series X so that you don't have to. Now you know what you are probably maybe missing out on. I still consider myself to be very much a PlayStation person and of course like Nintendo person, of course. But I have started to grow towards liking all brands, all the brands, all the systems and I don't want this to be a console war. I want to like all of them and I can find pros and cons within all consoles. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you want to subscribe to my channel because I'm a gaming channel and that you like the video and follow my Discord, which we are a huge community in. And I also post a lot of uh, updates on Twitter and Instagram. That is all you need to know for today. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you later. <laughs> Bye.